Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and this is Two Back or Not to Back. We're going to be going over a whole bunch of crowdfunding campaigns over on Kickstarter, on Backkit, and on GameFound, and we skipped last week, which means there's a whole bunch of campaigns to go over. This is actually one of the busier weeks we've had in a while, and before we dive into it, just a quick reminder and disclaimer that I was recently hired by GameFound. I've been doing this series for three years before GameFound, but take that into account as we go through this. Starting off the bat with Cult of the Now. Starting off the bat with Cult of the Now, which is going to be Cult of the Now, where we take a look at an existing retail game that you can get your hands on now instead of waiting for, for crowdfunding and the cost of crowdfunding and the uncertainty of crowdfunding and the risk of the unknown with crowdfunding and the fact that there's not enough reviews for all the games you want with crowdfunding, all the all the issues that are that are with crowdfunding, Cult of the Now, a regularly available game, in this case Encyclopedia, which is technically only available for pre-order over on Miniature Market. Now, uh, unfortunately this one, there are still not a ton of reviews, so maybe you still want to wait. Personally speaking, I adore this game. I thought this was one of the best games I played last year. One of the, one of the top 10 easily I've played from the games I've covered. I really enjoyed this one. A solid, solid game, but then again, that's just my opinion. You might want to wait for more reviews, but if you do want this, $42 for pre-order over on Miniature Market. And with that, let's go and start off, as usual, with board game adjacent, starting with the Project Ironside Table, a $399 extendable board game table that has raised $3.2 million. This one's doing, well, you can say fairly decent overall. 4,000 backers, 37 days to go, this is offering you a board game table for the low price point of $400. Obviously, that price goes up once you start adding things in, but that's true of all board game tables in any way, shape, and form. Whatever the starting price is, you can double that by the time you're done if you want to go ahead and add the topper and the accessories and the this and the that. You could triple it in some cases. It gets fairly expensive. But in this case, if you want to get in on this table, this gives you a modular table that gives you a whole bunch of features and options. You can go through this whole page. This is not going to be a full deep dive into the table. There's a bunch of ways to adjust the table, to accessorize the table, to have your, your various uh, rails and whatnot. It's got like, you know, pads for your arms in case you want. It has a whole bunch of options as far as making this table better and right for you. Every single one of those options will cost more, making it not a $399 table anymore. But that's just the way things work when you buy stuff. It's just, the, it is the way things work. And past that, the game, the table looks very, very, the table looks very accessible and, and budget friendly as far as what it's trying to do. There are obviously trade-offs. Whenever you buy a $400 table instead of a $4,000 table, there are inherently trade-offs. But overall, $4 million or $3.2 million, I mean, by the time this campaign is done, it'll be $4 million easily. $3.2 million does mean that there was enough demand for whatever this is offering, including all those trade-offs. Further, we're going to go into a bunch of campaigns that are both canceled and not funding. In the cancel category, we have a power core Call of Cthulhu, which was unfortunately canceled. 342 backers, $18,000 raised. They thought this would attract more of a following. Uh, this one, it, it seems to be a big miss on this one. Not the gameplay, by the way. The gameplay was fine, but uh, rather the visual appeal of the game got a absolute ton of pushback from everywhere I could see. The combination of like a dark Cthulhu mythos with a bright blue Power Rangers card back, I think really threw a lot of people for a loop. Uh, I'm projecting my own opinion onto that. One of my bigger critiques was this game does not look good because of that, but also not just my own critiques. I am projecting the fact, not projecting, um, I saw a ton of people who were not happy with the card back. So over on board game geek they said something about how they're going to look into changing that but they launched the campaign with the way it looks as is which i think i i think people buy with their eyes and people back with their eyes and i think that didn't work great overall both the box design with the giant you know again the, the, it's, it's like power rangers with cthulhu all mixed together in terms of the the visual aesthetic and i just don't think that worked great Again, if it was just my opinion, I wouldn't harp so heavily on it, but it was my opinion plus a whole bunch of other people's opinion. Uh, they canceled. It did not seem if they were going to be clearly coming back, so this is one that it might show up again. It might not, too. We'll see. Time will tell on this one. In the not funding category, we have a few. We have Space Lion, a $12,000 raise out of two hundred out of $16,000 goal. With eight days to go, this one is close. It may creep over the finish line. 240 backers. Space Lion was on GameFound. They canceled. They came back to Kickstarter. Still not hitting it just yet, but they are doing better than they were in GameFound. Uh, over here, we have $29 for the base pledge, $59 for the Kickstarter exclusive pledge over here, and $89 for, well, all of this over there. Uh, but this is basically giving you a kind of, um, not really a lane battler, a, you're going to have a bunch of cards you're playing down into a central battle in which you're fighting your neighbor and fighting in the center arena. You're using your card plays and you're using your space line to define like your unique advantage in the game. So it's once of ca a card playing, which as people play their cards, you'll get a better sense of what they have left and be able to react more accordingly. Uh, again, so far not really doing incredibly. It might go. We'll see. We'll see. With eight days to go and three and a half thousand dollars left, it could go either way. 
From there, we have 18 Nambia over on GameFound. We have 18 Nambia. This one is a reversion of, it's like a redone version of 1895 Nambia, which has been around for a while, but that was designed for three players only. This is expanding out to four players as far as the game goes. They're currently a 13,000 euro raise out of a 20,000 euro goal. And with 13 days left to go, again, same problem. Could go either way, but it's going to be a tight stretch over the finish line. This is going to be a train game. I don't know a ton about the unique differences of this one, past the fact that it's based on 1895 Nambia. Nambia, Nambia. I think that's how you say it. And then lastly, in the not funding category, I think lastly, uh, last, no, wait, wait, one second. Yes, lastly, in the not funding category, we have Philosophy by Quality Beast. 141 backers, this was 5,000 euro race, and nearly 6,000 euro on a 24,000 euro goal. This does not look like it's going to fund, unfortunately. Even though there's more time left in this one, 21 days to go, uh, just based on the current traction, this is one that's probably looking for a cancellation and relaunch. Uh, this looks like a fun little abstract game. It's an abstract game in which you're trying to basically create a set of three tiles, and the way you place your tiles, you're placing your tiles on the board, but in a way that's also going to shift the other tiles based on the directional arrows of your tiles. So you're constantly placing and pivoting, placing and pivoting. Looks like an intriguing puzzle. Uh, box design's not fully pulling me in, but overall, as far as the actual gameplay, the concept of the gameplay is does look like a fairly intriguging abstract puzzle. Uh, we'll see. Uh, again, I expect a, a cancellation and relaunch over here. I know they have like an additional color or faction or something as far as the uh, extra stuff you can get over here. Here we go. We got the amber expansion contents, which gives you these new tiles over here. Don't know if it actually introduces anything else gameplay-wise. Wise. But yeah, this is a philosophy. Uh, it looks like a fun little abstract, but one that does not look like it's currently funding. Which brings us to the campaigns that are actually funding, starting off the bat with Powerline. That's not entirely true. It is, Pow it is Powerline. It's the Green Planet series, and the game is Powerline. Give me one second here. So... We have Powerline. Powerline from Durkan and Queen Games. Uh, Durkan, who's brought you Alhambra, Metro, Shogun, a whole bunch of those other games. Durkan has done, done a ton of game time. We have 7,000 euro raise at a $5,000 goal. I believe this is Queen Games' first launch over on the GameFound platform. Uh, we have 180 backers, 8 days to go. Powerline is a game of trying to create, well, power lines. You're going to be rolling your dice and activating these, these in, in either left to right or right to left as you try to push things down. You try to create your power lines along these tracks, putting uh, putting the various tiles to match the dice spots over here, uh, being mindful of the various abilities that you have over here, and then trying to basically just optimize around that. There's going to be a bit of a GameFound exclusive over here. The Queenie Sunny Island is a Queen Games exclusive, not a GameFound exclusive. A Queen Games exclusive that will not be in the box for retail. You can get it here or you can get it on their website or at conventions, uh, but it's Powerline. As usual with Queen Games, there's a bunch of options as far as getting other games. You can get Alhambra, you can get Metro. They usually throw other things into the various you know options you can get. Uh, we'll see what happens as far as the actual la uh, late pledge once they open up that fully as far as what else is available. Uh, but like a very recent campaign, they've had a lot of Alhambra Bing boxes and other stuff. Right now, they're keeping it fairly simple. But overall, this is Powerline, 40 euro for this one and gives you that uh, Queen Games exclusive while you go through it. From there we have Mini Meeple Melee. 553 backers, $16,000 raised. Mini Meeple Melee is exactly what it sounds like. It's a mini tin, tin game, which you have these tins that you can connect by magnets, as far as how you uh, set up the different battlefield arenas, and then you're tossing your meeples into there and starting the process of fighting as you go through all of that, using your unique meeples abilities. Each meeple is going to come with their own little ability of, you know, the alchemist and the knight, and their different options they can use as far as how to try to win over here. It's a small little skirmish game in a mint tin. That's all it is. It's a, it's, it's meant to be a travel accessible portal portable skirmish game, or just a small skirmish game, that that too. Uh, $20 for the Mini Meeple Melee, or $40 for the Fire and Ice Bundle, giving you the Mini Meeple Melee, and one copy of the Fire and Ice standalone expansion. Uh, overall, that is a decent amount of money for something on this size point, which just, make, it just makes it, in general, these smaller games are generally harder to resell, or in, in some way get your money back if they're not for you. Uh, with 553 backers, it's doing fairly well. 555 backers already updated. It's doing fairly well as far as that goes, but the price point compared to the contents makes this one a hard one as far as getting your money back after the fact if you find this is a game that's not for you and you want to sell it. From there we have Sea of Legends, Vengeance of the Empires. 1800 backers, 200000 dollars raised, 10 days to go. Sea of Legends is the expansion, or Vengeance of the Empires is the expansion for Sea of Legends, a game that has interesting ratings because of the fact that this game, Sea of Legends, launched on Kickstarter a while ago and then delivered to backers, and it delivered to backers as a paperweight, meaning it required an app and the app wasn't ready. This is always a potential problem. It happened with my father's work recently, although with my father's work, the gap between the app being ready and the game arriving was significantly smaller. With Sea of Legends, there were more gaps and more issues with the app, and that led to, I mean, right now it's 7.4 on Board Game Geek, but I think that the rating of the game should actually be higher because a lot of those ratings are tainted by people who did not have access to the game in some way, shape, or form, or played with the older version of the app as opposed to the newer version, and that does mean that 
those ratings are fair, don't get me wrong, but it means that you're kind of seeing the ratings for a product in development, if that makes sense. You, you should almost think of this as a second edition, and yet the ratings for it are from the first edition. I'm not trying to pitch the game to you, not in the slightest. I'm just trying to say, look at the ratings and try to take into account the more recent ratings if you're trying to see if this is a game for you. I think the 7.4 is likely higher, but whether it's 7.5, 7.6, those are all complicated conversations around the natures of rating things that are in development progress, because that's, that's what this is. In any case, that's all the backstory to Sea of Legends. So it launched on Kickstarter, it arrived, it had some, some issues with it that made it harder to receive initially, but now we're back with Vengeance of the Empires, and they're coming out with a new edition of the app as well. Uh, so you're going to have a whole bunch of new things over here, new content, new edition of the app, new everything for this game. Uh, over here we're going to have, as far as the pledge levels, we have $75 for, this, for the Vengeance of the Empires expansion, we have uh, $75 for the Rise of the Ancients expansion, we have $100 for the base game, and $140 for both expansions of the game, in case you want all of that. And this is basically, Sea of Legends is a game that is giving you a open world piratey adventure, which relies heavily on the app, as far as the app implemented, the adventures you're going to be going on, and the interactions you're going to have are all very strongly guided by the app. So it's an app-based sandbox pirate game, I guess is the terminology you'd use over here. Uh, the miniatures look fantastic, art looks fantastic, game, like I said already, generally has pretty good ratings if you look at more recent ratings, although there are, definitely take a look at them, see if it's a game for you or not for you, but this game seems to be, it seems to be like a little bit, I think the more common things I saw were potential issues with setup or potential issues with randomization, but past that, a lot of people really seem to enjoy this game and what it's offering you so it does seem like there's a lot of good here just have to figure out what to look for whether it's a game for you or a style of game that's even in your personal interest and all that but that's basically sea of legends and the both expansions of the game as far as should you back or should you not will it hold this value all of that stuff if you look at the original game, it's kind of a mixed bag. And I think a big part of this is because of that initial reception. If you look at sales for this game, you can find people who sold it for above what they paid for. The original Kickstarter was like $150 all in, $155 all in. And if people can, you can find people who sold it for above what they paid for, and you can find people who sold it for below what they paid for. it. I think it's all over the place, and I think a lot of those sales kind of depend on the frustration of the individual backer at the time. That does mean that I am kind of mixed in this one. It could do fine, it could hold its value, it could be a missed bag, and it could be a missed opportunity entirely. So it could go either way in this one i would say back this with the understanding that you might lose a little bit you might get your money back entirely if you find it's game fit and that's not for you from there we move to the necro hamster the necro hamster which really should be being covered by devon talks tabletop with all his hamster cult going on but the necro hamster is a charming card game for two to four players summon skeletons zombies and spirit creatures complete with your rivals and become the necro hamster forty six thousand dollars raised 1400 backers 10 days to go necro hamster is a, is a game which you're going to have a bunch of goals in the middle that you're trying to get certain objectives and then playing a bunch of cards to try to basically it's, it's a card play game it's one of those games that has just a lot of card play. Draw cards, play cards, use abilities, get into those way, and be mindful of the abilities going on in the center as you go through it. Uh, fairly straight to the point, just with a more adorable or less adorable theme, depending on what it is you're looking for over here. 14 pounds gets you, for seven, roughly $17, 14 pounds gets you the Necro Hamster card game, and then for 30 to 26 pounds or $30, you get the Necro Hamster bundle over here. This one's doing well with 1,400 backers, but overall, this is one that as a quick playing card game, these generally do not do a great job holding their value. If you're interested, great, by all means, but they don't do a great job holding their value after the fact. And from there, give me one minute. We move on to Uluk, or Uluk, or one of those things. Probably should find out how to pronounce this one. This is coming to you from Hexy Studio. 355 backers, $25,000 raised, 12 days to go. Uh, Uluk is a beautifully illustrated Euro game of hunting, gathering, and cooking. As tribe leader, ensure happiness and well-being of your folk. What does that practically speaking mean? Well, it's a worker placement game. It's a worker placement game with six phases, and we are six rounds, I should say. I think there's a bunch of phases, there's phases and there's rounds. It's a worker placement game across six rounds, six ages of the game, years, whatever it is, seasons, whatever the, the term, game term definition is. As you place your workers and try to gather your resources and build these monuments up here, I think they're monuments, they're called... Monuments, yes, they're called monuments over here. Building these monuments up here, and by the way, these plastic ones over here are either paid add-on or a pledge level thing. Not guaranteed. They have these standees as well, as far as these goes. But it's a worker placement game with some unique twists, as far as exactly how this one operates. Uh, the game art looks beautiful. The gameplay, like the, I mean, the game art overall, is really pulling me in. The game, uh, the, the components are pulling me in. All that stuff, and they have two expansions off the bat, as well as the monuments uh, deluxification as well. Uh, that's as far as what they have over here. Base pledge is going to run you forty-six dollars for forty-five dollars for the core game, and the all-in is going to run you eighty-one dollars, which is a discount from buying these. If you buy the monuments, the wrath of the gods, and the ancestral spirit. An an Ancestral spirits separately, then you're saving like 16 euros. It says over here like you're saving like 18. I'm pretty sure you're not. Oh, 18.199. Yeah, it says over here you're saving 18 euro. I may have missed the uh, math in this one, but it felt like the math was different because it's 45. Let's do this right now. It's 45 because I'm pretty sure I did this correctly. We have 45 over here 
plus 45, plus 18 for the monuments, plus 16 for the Wrath of the Gods, plus 16 for that. That brings us to 95. I think they did it as if it's 99. I think they did it as if it's 18 euro each for those, but it says 18, 16, 16. And so I think they got their math wrong on that. I think. Maybe I'm missing something. But either way, that's as far as what you're, you're still saving. You're just saving less as far as that goes. And then these over here, the monuments over here, are going to be Kickstarter exclusive. Understand that. Uh, but as far as that's everything you have as far as you look. Should you back it? Should you not? Hexy Studio games are tough. They generally have the, they have a, a, a wide variety of games that they've created already. And they've never done tremendously well. They've always done fine. They've always gotten a decent reception. And they always have low availability after the fact. So if you want these games, generally the Kickstarter is the safest way to get your hands on them. You can certainly find them. I remember the last one, Space Orbital, is certainly available in Miniature Market. You can find your hands on that one. But generally, if you want their games, Kickstarter is the safest option because they have a low aftermarket availability. So you kind of have to get the Kickstarter or get the retail right when they come out. After that, it's kind of more of rolling dice, you're rolling the dice to see if you can get your hands on it. But also, as far as holding its value, these ones generally do not hold their value quite as well. Uh, they generally have, again, like 355 backers over here. It's not a huge following. And I mean, I'm surprised, honestly. The game looks great. The game looks solid. Uh, granted, it doesn't. I don't necessarily know what it's necessarily doing differently as far as why this one's standing out. But generally, people buy with their eyes. And this one is certainly a game that looks like you can buy it with your eyes. It looks beautiful. The components look great the art looks great i'm surprised it's only 355 backers but it is where it is and that ultimately this tends to be the case for a lot of the games as far as just not really finding that huge audience and so that usually carries over into the aftermarket as well moving on to robomon over on gamefound robomon from gabe gay bear this is 142,000 back 142,000 dollars 142,000 backers would be great $140,000 out of a $50,000 goal, 1,300 backers so far. This is basically a Pokemon adjacent. It's an exploration game for one to two players in which you're going to be gathering around, gathering uh, the all the Robomon as you as you gather the Robomon, level them up, take them into combat, deal with all that. Uh, it's an adventure game, a solo and or cooperative adventure game as you explore the world of Robomon, collecting everything out, going through the comics, the puzzles, the 30 plus hours of gameplay, upgrading your team and battles and all these different things going on here, all managed within the book system over here, making it very accessible. And that's basically Robomon. Uh, lots of intriguing stuff going on here. This seems to be Gay Barrett's uh, highest funded campaign. He's done a bunch of game campaigns in the past. His last one, I think, was a set of like three games that I, I backed that one. Looked fun. And this over here, this is, uh, I believe, his largest campaign so far. And doing, like, again, Pokemon. It's collecting Pokemon as you go through all of that over, over here. Uh, no rulebook necessary. The game starts you with the off when you open the box, and you just go straight through all of that, which I generally am a huge fan of games that make it that easy to jump into and dive into and play. As far as pledge levels over here, there's two main pledge levels. There's $79 for the base game, and then $99 for, sorry, three main pledge levels. I lied. $99, $99 for the base game plus expansion, and $125 if you want all the deluxe components as well. Deluxe components being all of of these tokens nope nope scroll down further scroll down further here we go here's all the deluxe stuff you're looking the tournament of titans expansion the card holders and all of these tokens over here as far as just you know upgraded deluxification resources and that the game also comes with a soundtrack that you can play as you go through it and a whole bunch of stretch goals slowly but surely being unlocked as far as should you back it should you not the biggest question on this one and they don't really cover this in the y back now unfortunately the y back now has hey it's a discounted from the 99 dollars so it's 79 dollars it's cheaper that's great uh, over here you can vote in additional content you can receive the soundtrack all those are decent reasons the discount is always tr tr trickier just because of the fact that uh, generally you have to factor in MSRP versus final price. But the biggest question over here is just ultimately will it show up in retail or not and what availability this will have after the fact. I believe it's been picked up by, there's a distribution, there's a distributor who is involved with it. But yeah, the biggest question over here is going to be the aftermarket availability. But this is basically Robomon from Gay Bear at $142,000 and 1300 backers and that's where we are with that. Moving on to Almost Innocent. Almost Innocent from Gossel Games. $43,000 raised, $1,000, 1000 backers, 15 days to go. Almost Innocent is a cooperative deduction game, a cooperative deduction game in which you work together with the other players to ask questions to try to figure out what your alibis are as you go through the game. Each player has their own unique solution as far as like, you know, their their own crime they've been accused of and you have to help, they hold, all your teammates hold the keys to the innocent because they know which crime you've been accused of. As you go through this uh, sequential modular game, sequential and modular, it's, a cam it's almost campaign play, I don't know if it's officially campaign play, it's got like episodes of increasing difficulty, increasing uh, rules and other things being added, but it also has modules that you can add to each and every scenario to further complete 
completely add to this degree of variety you have as far as which scenario you're playing, which modules you're adding in, and which uh, pu what puzzle you're basically netting, with, depending on how you combine all those things. You're trying to figure all that out while you distribute the actual goals, and everyone's going to have their own, you know, their own to weapon and their own location and all those things. As you ask questions like, how many clues do I have in this row? Which clue, you know, is my is my uh, you know my my victim in this row? And you're asking questions and trying to use the abilities of the game to try to deduce yours and other solutions as you go through this. So basically, cooperative deduction. Ask a lot of questions, figure out the answers as you go through this. Main pledge level is just one pledge level over here. Thirty dollars for the almost innocent base game and the Almost Innocent Stretch Goal Pack. That's all you're getting over here. Uh, this one is, as far as should you back, should you not, generally, you know, the Colossal Games ha have a many Colossal Games. Some of them do very well in Kickstarter, but for the most part, they usually fall into a, hey, they do pretty decently category, and they have a low low aftermarket sale, meaning, as far as holding its value, they generally don't sell great for on the aftermarket. You don't get enough extra stuff, and the pledge levels and the demand are usually not quite there. Uh, this one, you can back it on Kickstarter, you can get it at retail, or you can buy it on the aftermarket. All of them are viable options. It won't do a great job holding its value. Moving on to Dwarf 7 Legendary Forest. 644 backers, $51,000 raised. Dwarf 7 Legendary Forest is a continued uh, big box and components and all that stuff upgrade to the Dwarf 7 Spring, which is a family weight engine building game. I believe worker placement, if I recall correctly. Let's see. I believe, yeah, worker placement game, a worker placement and engine building game. Dwarf 7 Spring is part of the Dwarf 7 series, which has a whole lot of games under the belt, but I believe Dwarf 7 Spring is the highest rated from those games. Generally, I think it's like a 7.9 on Board Game Geek, which is certainly nothing to nothing to sneeze at, cough at, whatever the terminology is. But yeah, Dwarf 7 Swing, uh, that's a worker placement for engine building game, and Dwarf 7 Legendary Forest is giving you more content, more upgrades, more expansions for that game. We have returning backers, $40 is going to give you the Big Box Legendary Forest, $60 is going to give you the Dwarf 7 Spring and the World Volume and Stretch Goals, for $60 you get the Legendary Forest expansion, and for $120 you get the Dwarf King bundle over here, and that is what you have as far as these there's different options for just everything you're getting as far as the, the box the expansions, the upgrades, the plastic components, a whole bunch of different ways to customize what it is you're going to get for this bundle. As far as should you back or should you not, will it hold this value? These ones are tougher in general just because of the fact that it's an expansion. Uh, so in general, when you buy an expansion, it, uh, for the most part, people who are trying to get their hands in this are likely selling the entire thing. So it kind of depends on where you are in this one. If you're someone who's just interested in the expansion, well then probably getting on a Kickstarter is your best bet because the aftermarket option is just going to be one of trying to see someone who's selling just the expansion content, which is always harder. And if someone's interested in the entire bundle from the get-go, then waiting for the aftermarket or trying to see what you can get your hands on, it might be a better choice depending on current availability. Moving on from there to Kinfire Chronicles Night's Fall. Kinfire Chronicles Night's Fall, 1,400 backers, $182,000 raised, 15 days to go. Kinfire Chronicles is giving you a quick start adventure board game for one to four players. The goal being to give you like 20 plus hours of gameplay. I think it's 20 plus. It might have been 30 plus. I think it's 20 plus hours of gameplay uh, as you go through basically trying to like look at this look at this GIF over here. As you go through trying to pull out this quick start accessible game. The whole point of what they're trying to do is give it give you an adventure game system, a Gloomhaven Light, but with a significantly more accessible experience where you can pull things out quickly and play them very quickly. As you go through 20 plus hours of epic gameplay in sessions of 45 to 60 minutes. So I was right. It was 20 plus hours of epic gameplay. You're going to have over here your, you know, your, your the board game over here, the um, com contents over here from the first page over there, and then you have all this, just, let's see if we can find where it is. Select a quest over here. Uh, you're going to be pulling out all the contents. You're going to be looking at the adventure you're going through. You're going to be setting up and combating the enemies together, exploring the town, going through all of this. Again, the goal is, I think there's even a better Jeff earlier. There's one even better somewhere. Maybe, oh, it's probably in here. If we go through here, let's see if we can find it over here. So if we go through over here, let's see if we can pull it out. There we go. Let's just watch this for a second. This page over here is where we pull it out slowly, faster. Yeah, there we go. So you're going to be pulling out this game over here. Again, the goal being quick start and accessible in these set bunch of sessions. You're going through hour-long sessions of gameplay. So you just set it all up with beautiful acrylic standees. And yes, you can buy more of those different options as far as the upgrades, which brings us to the pledge levels over here. And again, it's a classic dungeon, dungeon crawler, adventure style game. Think anything from Stuff Fables all the way up to Gloomhaven or somewhere in between as far as basically just how it looks and what it seems to be giving you. 26 unique maps, 15 mainline quests, uh, two towns to explore, 22 booster packs to build your character, a lot of content over here while trying to maintain that accessibility to make it an easier game to table comparatively speaking to other games well in this genre out there. As far as the pledge levels, pledge levels have you at 
We have $99 for the base game over here, which is $50 off the MSRP of $149, so it's basically 66% of that, although that's trickier because we're going to talk about shipping as well. So it's a 33% discount over there. Uh, you have $175 for the premium uh, premium collection, which is giving you the Kinfire Premium Upgrade Kit, the Unlocked Premium Stretch Goals, the Kinfire Chronicles Board Game, the Unlocked Base Tier, and the Audio Narration App. So you're looking at all these extras over here as far as what you're getting. There's a bunch of, uh, let's see if we can find the Premium Upgrade Kit. We have the Unlocked Extras, we have the... Characters over here, and those acrylic standees, by the way, look absolutely amazing. In general, I mean, acrylic standees do range as far as how they look, and I think a lot of it depends on the art, whether the art kind of carries over that 3D aspect to it. And this art seems to pull in that 3D. You can almost see the layers of the two different pieces of art on both sides contributing to that 3D uh, kind of feel that the acrylic standee gives it. Yeah, like, again, look at this. This looks absolutely amazing. You can kind of see the outline of two different shades of art. It works well. Anyways. Moving on over here, we have the enemy upgrade kit, which is going to be acrylic versions of all enemy standees. That's going to be $50 for all. It's already included in the premium collection box, so that is included there. That's going to be upgrading all the enemy standees to acrylic, so you don't have just yourself. For the heroes, you have the enemies as well. We have six player mats, which again, included in the premium collection box. We have metal fate tokens, again, included in the premium collection box. And we have the audio narration included in the premium collection box. So basically, those all give you different options. $175 to get jump from the $100 to the straight up $175 give you access to all those extras over there whole bunch of tons of extras for just modifying and that those would run you um we have 50 30 80 100 114 dollars extra and they're giving it to you for 75 dollars extra which is another extra savings off of buying those separately and that's what you have as far and then we have some more upgrades which are not available in the box and that is kinfire chronicles as far as should you back it should you not the biggest question over here is going to be retail availability the problem is shipping is going to run you around 34 dollars just for the base game on its own so that base game that's technically 99 dollars which is a saving off that 150 msrp once you factor in and shipping even before you get to anything else, once you factor in just shipping, that's going to run you $134 off $149 MSRP, which means if this shows up in retail with $149 MSRP, you will be getting that game for cheaper. The nature of buying it from your online local game store means that $150 MSRP is going to translate into like $114 price point, $120 price point, which can be cheaper than the $134 you're paying now. So it does kind of depend on retail availability and whether that MSRP stays the same. The shipping is just the biggest blocker over here as far as comparing it to what you you can otherwise get your hands on it and that does make it the biggest question and obviously each range, each place has their own shipping cost you have to factor in there's cheaper shipping in different areas different ranges so factor that in as far as whether this is a game for you or not the biggest question is that retail availability uh, if it's not heavily available in retail i think the price point and the game they're offering here is compelling enough that it's worth the price to me the only real question is whether it shows up in retail for less than what they're asking for it here which in general is a big reason not to get it here and that's the potential problem so falls into a mid-rate thing mid range range where I think the game actually has the demand you might be looking for and I think it's a game that's probably worth it to very many people but it's just a question of the price point shipping plus all that now if you want all the extra content if you want all the expansions and the the uh the acrylic standees and all those other things that are going to be hard to get your hands on well then those I would definitely go ahead and get the kickstarter if you're interested in those because those would be even harder plus the additional discount makes that even more compelling moving on to the fog escape from paradise relaunch 315 backers, this was a Kickstarter a while ago, cancelled, it was a heavily, heavily contested time when this one launched, and now we're back over here, 315 backers, $17,000 raised, 17 days to go, The Fog Escape from Paradise is a game which you're trying to uh, take control of various people on the island as they race away from the island onto the boats, being mindful of the various obstacles in play, the various abilities of the characters as they move around, and then the ever encroaching fog that is slowly creeping up on all the players, basically trying to, well, eliminate them. That's basically that's all, that all that's happening here, it's the fog, it's, a, it's an abstract navigational game with like fun little 3d elements as you try to race to the boats and try to get out better or more efficiently than the other players it's going to run you 37 dollars for the elder standard game it's going to run you 60 57 dollars for the deluxe game which takes you to one to six players and that's basically what you have over here. As far as should you back or should you not, well, with 307 backers or whatever, it's 315 backers. This is one where it's not going to see a ton of availability either on the second-hand market or, or anywhere. So if you want this game, I would say backing it is your best chance. But as far as holding its value, it's less likely to hold its value. The price point, $37 plus shipping, it's not terrible. But it's still one that's just less likely to have a ton of demand, making it a harder one for you to get your money back if it's not for you. Moving on to Fugitive. Oh, so Fugitive 2nd Edition and Run Over on Back here. This is two games, two games bundled together, although you could get them separately. It's either Fugitive for $25, or Run for $33, or both for $50, representing an $8 discount. And the way you should get them if you're interested in these, as far as the should you back a part of the conversation. 
Fugitive is a second edition. Classic discussion game back with a new expansion over here. Uh, Fugitive is a game which you're playing down cards, trying to basically sequentially jump ahead of your opponent as they get tracked, trying to figure out where your hideout is or where you are up to effectively. Uh, this is a very solid game. Played it a long time ago. Really enjoyed it. It's a very fascinating puzzle of two players just operating completely asymmetrically as one player tries to hunt down the other. Very, very fascinating puzzle that worked really well. Just a solid, solid game and they come back with a shift expansion included. Uh, the shift expansion is going to be based on shift from mind management. So if you're like, I've seen that term before. Yes, the shift concept from mind management is being applied here. They spoke to them. They love the concept. Basically, the shift management is a a system which as you win or lose the game, you give the other player little adjustments to their abilities to balance the game. So you can play best of three, best of five, best of seven, constantly adjusting the game state to accommodate based on how other players have won or lost the experience, which is a fun little way to add on to your, to your game. But past that, that's what you have as far as the Fugitive and the Shift expansion. And then Run. Run is another game that they're coming out with as well. It's again, asymmetrical tactical game of, of hide and seek, similar to Fugitive, but whole different mechanically con whole different mechanical concept to it. As the, you, one player is playing uh, with a helicopter running around trying to locate the other character, as the other character is jumping, jumping from safe house to safe house trying to get to three safe houses, each time unlocking abilities they can use to help them out while the other player hunts them down. Again, both of them are being very asymmetric game, or stashes, not safe houses. Uh, both games are very asymmetric as far as they're doing both being very short accessible puzzle games both have a ton of content out there both for the run the newest game out there which is the one being introduced over here uh, you can check out content and, and feedback from there i think thinker themer covered it if i'm not mistaken and then fugitive just has a lot of content on it because fugitive is an already existing game this is just a second edition which is just more of the original stuff more the original stuff plus more and so lots of options as far as over here just oh yeah thinker themer did indeed cover it so yeah that's what you have over here fugitive and run should you back it, should you not? Overall, it really comes down to whether you're getting both games over here. Once you're getting both games, that $8 savings does kind of push it over to a point where it just makes sense to get them both uh, right now. If you're getting one over the other, once you factor in shipping, then it's kind of anyone's anyone's toss-up. You can get it now, you can get it later, at retail, you can get it from the, the, the publisher's website. You're not getting a huge saving if you're buying any single one title. If you're buying both, at that point, it's probably worth getting. As far as holding is found in the second market, both of them are smaller games that are hard to really resell and get your money back. It's just hard to really pick up. So I'd recommend either getting them now or getting them down the road at retail or on the publisher's website if you are interested in either of these games and again fugitive very well rated run i haven't played myself so i can't comment on that one and it's not out yet so i can't comment on across the board ratings but generally tim fowers puts out a lot of solid games and yeah i mean these ones are going to be well i mean they're doing well for a reason hundred thousand dollars raised 2300 backers for a reason moving on to wizard duel the magic and fantasy card game 337 backers, $15,000 raised, 22 days to go. Wizards Duel is a, well, a dueling game. A fast-paced dueling game with simultaneous play in which you're going to be playing down cards at the same time, utilizing the abilities at, at the same time. You're playing them both down and trying to cast your spells effectively as you attack and defend and react off of each other like that. Uh, this is created by a 12-year-old, which is fairly impressive, and that is basically... 12 year old to play like a lot of card games and MTG and all that stuff, so take that into account when I say created by a 12 year old. But yeah, over here we have the base tier for $15, we have the full game tier for $19, and then we have a bunch of other options for different ways to get more stuff over here. Uh, as far as should you back, should you not, generally it's games like this don't do a great job in the second hand market. This is almost more, I mean, even it is in the board game card game category, but it's a little outside the full hobbyist base. Uh, and yeah, overall this one, the art looks good, the game looks good, the simultaneous play looks accessible. I'm very impressed with what she's created over here, uh, but that is Wizards Do the card game. Moving on to Roco Ranger. Roco Ranger, a print and play game. 200 backers, $1,500 raised. A, ca a creature capturing print and play game. Generally, I don't really get two Pokemon adjacent games in the same roundup. I don't even get one. Today, we do get two, though, because this is another Pokemon adjacent game, which you're going to be going down a path progressively trying to collect your various uh, Roco Rangers and then train them, train your team to take down the champion. That's what it is. It's a print and play game, but it's a little step up from your ta classic print and play role and right in terms of being not step up, a step sideways as far as your classic print and play role and right game that we see on Kickstarter nowadays. Uh, being more of a, a, a Pokemon hunting game, just Roko Ranger Pokemon hunting game. You can see over here as you uh, get them, as you evolve them, as you go through all that. Very adjacent over there to the Pokemon experience. But again, it's just funny to me that I have two in the same series when I usually don't even have one. That's going to run you $5 for the Ranger game over here and $29 for your champion to get your own unique Roko in the game. So you receive everything you need to start playing Roko Ranger and you get your own unique Roko as well. Uh, but that is Roko Ranger. It's a print and play. It's, these don't hold the value. Just bring, you, bring them to your attention as you see more and more of these in the crowdfunding space that is increasingly complicated as well while everything goes on. There we move on to Lying Pirates, the base for the Pirate Throne. 1,300 backers, $109,000 raised. 24 days to go. Lying Pirates is a take on Liar's Dice. It's a classic take on, or it's a take, 
It's a new take on the classic game Liar's Dice. It brings you Liar's Dice gameplay as you try to basically roll your dice in the cup and you start bidding based on, well, I think it's four sixes. I think there's three sixes. You're trying to escalate each other, uh, what, trying to one up based on your own hidden information and based on the knowledge of what other players are bl bluffing. And so you're trying to take that into, get into account to basically win the bluff. Uh, from there, it takes that general concept and expands it to a full gameplay over here as you have, you're going around this map over here trying to take advantage of those areas. So it's kind of combining Liar's Dice with a deeper game around it. Uh, it's also doing so at a decent and price point for basically running you $64 for the base game and $89 for the deluxe expansion over here, deluxe edition of the game, bringing you all of this over here. You don't get the gun. I'm pretty sure you don't get the gun. You don't get the metal octopus. You get you get other stuff for the actual game contents itself. But this is uh, lying, the lying pirates, the race for the pirate throne. As far as should you back or should you not, it's a hard one to say in this one. 1300 backers definitely has a following. The price point to components seems to be a bit off though, which makes it a little harder. Meaning, not saying it's not premium or like that. Just generally, what it seems like what you're getting that perception of value. I should use the words perception of value. The perception of value is a little harder to justify over there as far as the price point to what you're getting, which does typically mean that it does see a harder time in the second-hand market, but it's also doing better than I would have thought on Kickstarter, so a little bit more of a toss-up on that one. I would still be skeptical this will hold this value as far as if you find it's not for you versus whether you can get your money back and all of that, but it, it's a bit more of a toss-up. But if you're interested in the game, this is Lying Pirates, uh, you know, a few options as far as jumping in on it, and it's Liar's Dice plus some more as far as the gameplay goes. And then lastly, we have Watch Hockey and Get Drunk from Falling Whale Games. 375 backers, $8,000 raised. This is Watch Hockey Get Drunk. This is literally, literally, that's, that's what it is. It's exactly that. You're watching hockey and you're getting drunk. The whole game is playing down cards as you try to figure out the always in play cards and the intermission cards and the secret play cards. But the whole idea is you're trying to play cards while watching an actual hockey game. That is the game. It's not like, just be very clear, the goal here is you watch a hockey game while you play this and then you play things based on the things that are happening in the actual hockey game. That should be all you really need to know in case you see if it's one that's interested or not. You might be. I, I don't mind hockey. This is just not not quite as much my genre. It's just, uh, it's here, not really my genre. But in case you want that, uh, you have a few options over here, but the main option is the $15 for the take, your, take the shot. If you like watching hockey and get drunk, getting drunk, that's literally the name of the game. Which brings us to the picks of the week. Picks of the week, we have a few things really as far as options. Every week in the picks of the week, I generally do two things. I do one that is the value pick, the one that I think is the most likely to hold its value. And then for two, I do the one that I am personally the most interested in. And this week, there's actually a lot of overlap on those two choices. See, for me, both Kinfire Chronicles and Robomon are the ones that I am both the most interested in and the ones that I think are most likely to hold their value. I'm going to go with Kinfire Chronicles as the one that I'm personally the most interested in. They're close, but a Kinfire Chronicles, I think, wins it over for me. I'm intrigued, but also it could be a complete flop for me. I find these styles of games, I kind of have to play them to see if they work for me or don't work for me. Some are amazing, and some not so much, but Kinfire Chronicles is going to be my pick of the week for the one that I'm most interested in. And for my value pick of the week, I'm not going to pick anything this week. The value pick of the week is the one that I am most certain will hold this value from all the campaigns we've covered. And for the most part, I'm not seeing any campaigns we covered today as being great value picks. It's not bad value picks, but there's not a ton of like, oh, obviously this is the game you should get on Kickstarter. There's a few that are safer picks as far as if you're getting things. If you want the Fugitive Bundle, by all means, there are different options on the table as far as ones that are safer or less safe, but there's no standout value pick. There's a bunch of, hey, this could do fine, or you can go ahead and wait for retail or the secondhand market as well. So, so not going to pick a value pick. I'll Although Robomon, Kinfire, Fugitive all fall into that middle range as far as where things go. But that is everything. Uh, that's all the stuff as far as that, which brings us to what do we have coming up next week. A few things, and there's lots coming up. We have a lot launching tomorrow, but just two things that I'm interested in. We have Quad Hero Second Edition launching tomorrow. This is a game that I adore and I I, should, I would say I implore you to back it, but I don't implore you to back it. You should back the things that you want, and this is an expensive game that will cost you a lot of money, but Quad Heroes is an absolutely charming game that I thoroughly enjoy, and I'll have a video on it tomorrow just because, I mean, I've already covered this game, but I just want to talk about it again because I really like the game and I want to see it do well. And then separately from that, we have Forsaken. Forsaken, 3,849 followers already. Forsaken from Game Trades. This is an ambitious game that is going to be doing a lot of things that... You can check out a whole lot of options for gameplay and, and, and reviews and different options out there to see if this is a game for you or not. And with that, we're going to go ahead and call it for this week. Sadly, to those who wait till the end, I usually have a dad joke. I forgot to prep a dad joke this week, so, so we got nothing instead. Just me drinking my coffee and trying to figure out what I'm doing for the rest of the day. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and I hope you have a good one.